all the spinners in the Krikatoyo's interface have a button with two arrows on the side, and that's for managing uh, presets. Um, we have provided some hard coded, not hard coded, but just uh, uh, initial sets of values. For example, if you want to set the drop uh, point filter by linear filtering in version 2, uh, you can click on this arrow and you get a list of typical settings, like you want a sampling of 4 or sampling of 8, you can select them, but currently there is no 6 on the list, so if you want to set it to 6, you can enter 6 or click on the arrow uh, correspondingly to go to a value that you want, and then you can select add from the list, and now it's on the list. Next time I start Max and Krakatoa, 6 will be there because it's saved in an INI file. And because currently 6 is on the list and is the current value, I have the option to remove it again. So this way I can uh, manage and if I want to use uh, 42 as a value, which doesn't make much sense in this case, but I want it, I can add it. I can remove it and I can also set it as default. We're going to look at that in a second. The same is true for pretty much all the spinner controls. This these two spinners actually have even a combined arrow that sets both. So if I want to go to 5 uh, with exponent of minus 2 uh, or go to um, any of the preset values, uh, it sets both with one click. The default management I just mentioned, uh, you can do it with spinners, but you can do it with pretty much every control that exists in Krikatoa. So if you're for example, say that next time I'll start Krikatoa fresh with a new instance, I want my filtering to be set to true and I want my uh, final pass density to be 1 and minus 2 and so on. I can go and say this will be a default, this will be a default and I want, for example, uh, let's say the to force additive rendering. I can check this option and then right click it and say this current value true for this option for additive rendering should be the new default. Current default is not even set so it's a factory default. When I do this if I right click again it says I can remove it again but currently it's set uh, to true so uh, let's see what will happen if for example I also enable motion blur right click it and say true will be the new default and then I uh, go and switch back to my scanline renderer. I won't even restore that path. And now when switching to Krikato, I'm going to create a new instance of Krikato. That means I'm not going to load the settings that I just had. I'm going to say no, I want a new fresh uh, startup instance of Krikato. And as you see, force additive mode is on, motion blur is on, my filtering, it looks like it that didn't kind of work. I'll have to look, it probably is a bug because that's a kind of a new feature, but the uh, pass actually got set correctly to 1 minus 2. So um, this is a way to actually customize pretty much every setting that exists in the user interface and give it a default uh, value that whenever you create a new instance of Krikatoa, even if you uh, assign it through the assign renderer, of 3ds Max, when the new instance comes, it will use those settings. So I don't have to go and change them each time if you don't uh, do volumetric rendering but do only additive rendering for a whole day, it's better to have it default uh, all the time. I can remove all these settings so next time I start, they won't default to that. Um, yeah, and this one reset the default. Okay. Um, all the preferences, in fact, can be set through, uh, I mean, all the defaults can be set through the preferences dialog. There are, there are two buttons here. The one says save the current uh, settings as user defaults and revert back to factory. That means I can go to the complete user interface of Krikatoa, check all the checkboxes that I want on by default, make all the settings uh, that I want in all the spinners, and then hit this button and the current state of every single rollout is going to be saved in a huge INI file and next time you start Krikator all the settings will be exactly the same. Uh, and if I hit this button it's going to delete the INI file which stores all those settings including the manual clicking and setting right to that same INI file so pressing this button reverts everything uh, to factory defaults as Krikator was first installed. The source switching uses a very similar approach. When uh, you look at the sources here, 
uh, we by default uh, ship with some of those checked and some of those unchecked. If you're using, for example, thinking particles a lot, some people don't have have it installed, but if you have it, you can go and say, I'm going to add this setup as a new preset, and I can even go and make that default. But the uh, interesting thing is that the defaults are split between render scene particles and save particles to uh, disk. So what I can do, for example, is let's assume that we're going to render only PRT loaders, PRT volumes, uh, film effects, here make us all the PRT objects that Krakatoa ships with. And we go and say this setup that I currently have checked will be the default for render scene particles. Then I switch to save particles, go back to the main controls, and uncheck all these guys, but check PFLOW geometry and PFLOW phantom and possibly thinking particles, but let's say that those are the two that I'm interested in when saving particles. So I go and say, this will be the default for when saving particles, and then I enable the option switch to user defaults on particle random mode change. When this is on, switching between rendering and saving will automatically restore the sources to what we just defined them to be. That means you don't have to remember to even check, hey, I'm going to render PRT loaders, but I'm going to save particle flows. There is no chance to save by accident the, PIF, uh, the uh, PRT loaders accidentally because all your controls are automatically switching back and forth. It's a very useful uh, speed up uh, feature and I don't know how many people actually use it, but if you didn't know about it, please remember it and use it. Uh, the saving of channels has uh, similar abilities, so if you go and switch to the um, mode for saving particles to disk, you see those channels, and these are the default channels that are proposed by Krikatoa after installation to save position, velocity, density, color, and so on. But you have this button here, and it allows you to uh, have presets for them. So, uh, for example, if you're only interested in position and velocity, you create a preset like that, and you can go and say, this will be my default for next time I create a Krakatoa instance, so I don't have to go and modify your channels each time you set up Krakatoa. You can decide what you need 99% of the time and make it the default. There are um, some controls in the user interface that uh, use the um, uh, render history to actually provide you with uh, values. Um, based on previous experience. And the same is true also for the saving paths of uh, the uh, safe particles rollout. But let's go first to the rendering mode and I'll go to globals. And you'll notice that next to, the, for example, the uh, color swatch for background color, there is a history icon. If I click this one, it's going to show me all the colors that I have ever used on this computer to save a scene with the background. So if I want to have this green color, just click on it, and it also shows me a list of all the presets that actually contain that color as a setting. On which date and what time and what was the name of the max scene, if there was one, it's listed on this list. So I know, aha, uh -huh, in that project when I was rendering that scene, my background was set to this color, so I can pick it from the palette. Um, and this data actually comes from uh, the presets that have been, I mean, the history records that have been saved each time you render an image in Krakatoa. By default, whenever you hit the render button, an image is saved with uh, whatever your output was. And uh, all the settings of the user interface are being saved and a lot of additional information. So in this case, we're extracting the data from those history records. And we have a track from, in my case, on this computer, probably three years back of any tests that I've done um, and all the colors that I've been using. The same applies, as I mentioned, to the uh, dialog uh, safe particles. Here we have the same icon to the left of all the paths. So if I click this icon, it shows me a list of all the uh, particle saving paths I have ever defined on this computer according to the history records. I can also do filtering uh, by the value or the path. And the same is true for even components. So if, I'm, if I go here and select this existing path from before, but I want to add an additional take which is currently not entered, I can click here and see all the takes that were ever used, uh, in this case, the version 1 and version 2, 
there is not much that I've done obviously here, but if I select this one, it's going to create uh, a path with that subfolder in between. And if I want uh, to uh, increment it, you probably know, you can click and say, yeah, I want to create a version two. Well, it doesn't exist, so I'll go back, or I can increment by 10, or I can increment by 100. Say yes, this will be the next version that we'll be doing. Um, so this way you can use existing information about your previous work from months or years uh, in the past to extract data instead of remembering what the actual paths were.